All right, welcome to our scene on cystic fibrosis, represented by these sisters who fight with roses. These sisters here, you see there, they fight a lot and they have roses, they're holding roses when they fight. Sisters fighting with roses for cystic fibrosis. So you might notice that they could shoot out DNA with explosions. The DNA shooting out with explosions to help us remember that cystic fibrosis is the most common lethal genetic disease in the Caucasian population. Before we talk about the pathophysiology of cystic fibrosis, you might have noticed that they had Reese's chocolate flying out of their pockets here. They like to carry Reese's chocolate. Reese's chocolate shows up in our autosomal recessive videos, as cystic fibrosis is inherited in autosomal recessive fashion. Okay, now let's talk about the pathophysiology of this disease. We'll explain soon why this scene is taking place at a swimming pool. But anyway, this seven over here is really scared. In the old joke, six was scared of seven because seven ain't nine. But in our scene, Seven is scared, and Seven is scared of the Sisters with Roses. This is to help us remember that cystic fibrosis occurs due to a defect on chromosome 7, specifically on the sifter gene, on the CFTR gene. And we'll remember that because this Seven is actually hiding inside of a sifter. Check out that sifter over here. The Seven is hiding out in the sifter. To help us remember that the defect in cystic fibrosis is in the sifter gene on chromosome 7. This defect can be due to a number of things, but it's most commonly a deletion of phenylalanine 508, represented by the feet in the pool 508. So anyway, sifter encodes an ATB-gated chloride channel that secretes chloride in the lungs and the GI tract. It also reabsorbs it in the sweat glands, but it secretes chloride in the lungs and GI tract. And of course, water will follow the chloride as water follows electrolytes, and that makes the secretion is watery. The mutation in cystic fibrosis leads to a decrease in chloride secretion, and thus a decrease in the water secretion. Additionally, the intracellular chloride results in compensatory increased sodium reabsorption through epithelial sodium channels, the ENAC channels, and this is due to the electric gradient. And thus there's going to be an increased water reabsorption, leading to an abnormally thick mucus secreted into the lungs and GI tract. How do you remember all this? Well, if you take a look at the swimming pool over here, we see this chlorine in the water. There's a lot of chlorine in the water. It's not leaving the pool, it's sort of just staying there to help us remember that the chlorine stays in the cells. It doesn't leave the cells, it doesn't get secreted. And that leads to, look at that salt over there. That little salt shaker is also in the pool, as sodium follows the chloride due to the electric gradient. So because the water is going to be reabsorbed, as we mentioned, there's going to be thick mucus secreted into the lungs and GI tract, represented by this little pipe over here coming out of the sifter with this thick mucus over here, the thick mucus in the lungs and GI tract. And this is what leads to the symptoms that we see in cystic fibrosis. So if you take a look at the floor over here, Sisters with Roses made a huge mess over here on the floor. First, they exploded the lungs to help us remember all the problems with the lungs in cystic fibrosis. There are recurrent pulmonary infections, such as Staph aureus, seen in infancy and early childhood, as well as Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which is often seen in adulthood. Other lung problems include allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, represented by the asparagus coming out of the lungs, and chronic bronchitis and bronchiectasis, represented by the broccoli coming out of the lungs, which leads to a reticulonodular pattern on the CXR, an opacification of the sinuses. Next, we come to the pancreas on the floor. This helps remember the pancreatic problems seen in cystic fibrosis. Pancreatic insufficiency, malabsorption with sciatoria, fat-soluble vitamin deficiencies, such as A, D, E, and K, associated gallbladder and liver problems, such as biliary cirrhosis and liver disease. And we'll just mention parathetically meconium ileus in newborns. And we see the nose over here with the polyps inside to remind us of the nasal polyps seen in cystic fibrosis. And the hand here, which interesting fingers, clubbing of nails, clubbing of nails is also seen in cystic fibrosis. Finally, we see the dead flower on the floor. The infertile ground produced this dead flower to remind us of the infertility in men seen in cystic fibrosis due to the absence of the vas deferens and subfertility in women who may present with amenorrhea and abnormally thick cervical mucus. For sake of completeness, we'll talk about treatment for cystic fibrosis. Treatment includes chest physiotherapy, albuterol, aerosolized dornase alpha, dinase, and hypertonic saline facilitate mucus clearance. Azithromycin may be used as an anti-inflammatory agent. Ibuprofen slows the disease progression, whereas pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy is given for pancreatic insufficiency. In patients with a phenylalanine 508 deletion, which we talked about, there's a combination of lumacaftor which corrects misfolded proteins and improves their transport to cell surface, and Ivacaftor, which opens up chloride channels and improves chloride transport. 
Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on cystic fibrosis. Please subscribe to the channel, be in touch, leave your comments, and take care.